I hope everybody's paying attention today because we have a friend calling in from Thailand and his name is Master Montak Chi and he's ranked 18th most spiritual people in the world. Welcome Master. How are you doing today? Hi. <laughs> Thank you. So this Chi Gong that you have uh, been master of the year for twice, you know, it's kind of an exercise. It's, is it used for fighting and it's relaxation? What explain that to me? Qi Gong is the work of breath. Qi mean energy. A Qi Gong mean energy and Gong mean practicing the energy. That, but to practicing the energy is involved with how to breathe and how to breathe proper way. And that is what the Qigong. So Qigong, you have a sitting, sitting energy moving meditation. It's not quite the mind, but in the Tao state, we are very hard to just try to stop or not thinking anything in the mind. So in the Tao practice, it's using your mind to move energy. That means we have energy inside us. And the Tao discovered there are meridians. So they are, I'm the master in teaching the energy moving meditation. So you're sitting there, you feel energy, and there are pathway we call the microcosmic. That means a circle of energy in the body. So in the Tao believe that when we are in fetus and when we born, we have the energy moving inside us in two channels we call the functional channel energy from the front and the governor channel energy from the coccyx, from perineum coccyx, coccyx up the spine, up to the brain and connecting to the front channel through the palate and tongue. Yeah. So when we are fetus, when we are baby, we have this orbit moving. We have healthy, growing, and um, but when we grow up, we speak or we do everything and uh, too much emotional and too much problem come in now. The tongue connection, the energy move in the circle is lost. So we call we, we lose it. And now people getting sicker, getting not well like that. And the Tao believe that is the purpose. So the whole opening of two channel is a very vital basic training in the Tao. So it's kind of like the eye of the storm, right? You're trying to get yourself like you're in the middle of a storm where you're balanced, where you're you're letting go of things, you're relaxing, you're centering yourself, you know, where you're kind of in the middle, you're balancing yourself in this, like I call it the eye of the storm. You know, if you're in the middle of a, a storm, right, there you're safe. If you're outside that middle, you're going to get the remnants of the storm. So is that basically kind of the idea of centering yourself? Um, yeah. With the, the the centering yourself and feel energies moving. That means we born with this orbit, but when this orbit block, we start not energy don't moving, not circulating. We gradually have less and less energy, and we get sick. That is the theory of opening the microcosmic. We give everything a name, you know, cultures and and things that happen through their their culture and society and so forth. If there's only one quantum field. Mm -hmm. Why don't we just use this as a universal thing that everybody should pull from? Does that make sense? Like if there's yes, one quantum mean, uh, field. Yeah, in the Tao said we born with it. Everybody had that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you know what I mean? But sometimes I guess people outside of your world maybe need to embrace these things to some of their ideas to maybe enhance what yeah. that is more. Could, could that be a possibility? Could something like if someone had some rationales that could plug into what you do, that's some, some other structure that fits within your system. Why don't we see things like that? It kind of maybe blend together where it's a, more of a universal thing. You ever thought about something like that? Yeah. That means the, the, the same thing we say, energy circulation. That means we are human, we have energy, or we call life force, or in the West known as electromagnetic power. Electromagnetic, a human have, outside us have electromagnetic power, randomly moving, but not alignment. But human have bioelectromagnetic power. That means we have electromagnetic power that have life that, uh, using it or moving it or directing it or the, the whole body have this bioelectromagnetic power that in the West known as energy. And mm -hmm. in the Tao we call 
chi energy that have life that we can move. Okay, so mm. that's why we call qi gong is to increasing this bioelectromagnetic power that flow inside us because every cell, every cell have this negative positive energy in there. So we call the uh, negative. If we have too much uh, positive energy, that means pain. So we need electro to combine with the positive electro. Mm -hmm. So two energy have to come into positive, passive, pos uh, positive, negative, and energy can start it to spin and active and moving. Gotcha. When we have pain or we get sick, the area have too much positive electro and gotcha. have lesser or, or no negative electro electromagnetic power and that is too much positive is manifest as pain so and that's why we call that we call the energy chi moving mm -hmm. the same thing like the india they call prana but the chinese call chi yeah. chi so you're you're talking about the electro energy in human beings it's you know, when you talk about balance, is it? Yes. It's not light or dark, right? It's more about the no. electrodes of it's the a, body. Is the negative and positive have to be balanced? Yeah, based on the electrodes of of the human body, but it's not like a light energy or dark energy type of thing. No, because I think that part of it, you know, I don't know how you could break that down, but I think sometimes, like from us, look, you know, I understand it because I'm I'm a natural healer. I have energy coming out of my hands, you know, stones and things will transmitters will respond to me. I have Native American on both sides of my family. But I think if you if you understand that it's the 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 electrical system of the human body needs to be balanced compared to light or dark. Because sometimes you could read that as standpoint of the West, maybe could read that as light or dark energy. You know what I mean? I don't know if there's a way to uh, differentiate positive. that. Negative and positive, mm -hmm. you can say at light and darkness, mm -hmm. but there are no a, a darkness is doesn't mean bad, light it doesn't mean good. Mm -hmm. But when two light and darkness can be balancing, moving each other, yin push the yang, the dark push the light, the light push the dark light day and night. Gotcha. So the day and night they are moving, 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 continues on day and night and day and night like that. And that's how we call yin yang, negative and positive, gotcha. light and darkness and energy are moving because negative push the positive, positive pushing the negative. So we call the energy as spinning and moving inside us. So we call chi, life force, prana. That means it's moving. When mm -hmm. it stops moving, <laughs> There are no life existing. I mentioned something that I, I've had this rationale coming through about creation of four. I don't know if you've ever heard creation of four, but I, I came up with this process that mm. I was able to, to use content like video content. And I can use content to collect data because social media and human beings, uh, mm. they mirror themselves. And the only thing different Bet between the social media and the human being is is the algorithm, which is the business model of the app, which creates a balance based on their agenda. So if you understand human behavior, I was able to come up with a way to eliminate unconscious bias with data. So through through this process, I kept pushing and I said, things are linear, linear. Then I thought to myself that there's two mindsets in the world. There's a discovery mindset and there's a creation mindset. And I feel like 98% of society does things from a, a discovery mindset, which makes it harder to find the answer to anything. But if you come from a creation mindset, it's easier to find the answer leading to creation of four tied to the human body have you ever you know and i can walk through that creation rationale for you have you ever heard anything like that creation of four like god created things in fours in a linear process yes the, I'm, I'm a christian i grew up uh, in the church because my yeah. my my fourth generation is all pastor and minister you know gotcha. so i grew up in a church because uh so i read bible so long and when i learned the Tao practice i like the um, the Tao practice because they have they are not talking talking about too much they are practical practice yeah. they have explanation what what we are doing and how the body involved with it and how this energy moving inside us and how can we balancing negative and positive in the Tao believe that tai chi so tai chi symbol is yin yin yang 
Yin push the yang, yang push the yin. Nobody win, nobody lose. And that's why we call, we have, when people have more negative, a negative, the yin have more energy than the yang. Okay, so they are out, they try to push the yang out. So they are out of balance. So in the Tao say that we are living in this world, we should find a balance. Negative and positive. Sometimes we think bad, we don't like these people, we want to kick, him, kick them on the ass or something like that. It's okay. As long as you can think and you, can, you want to do it, but you haven't do it and you find a balance. I don't like him. I want to kick his ass, but I haven't do anything. But I try to find a negative and a positive part come to the balance. And you feel balanced, so it's okay. I don't like this guy. I just distant from this guy. I just don't get close to him or this guy. Kind of thing. So in the Tao said, the, it, it's try to find yourself balanced and you don't have to hate the person and you don't have to be like the person. Like that. So in, mm -hmm. in, a, in the equal balancing way of negative and positive balancing, that's how you know, that make yourself balance. <clears throat> how about feng shui? Are you, is that a, you know, feng shui is a very similar thing. Is that like, that's the, feng shui is environment. Like that's a piece of the puzzle. You know, you're talking about balance. Is there any pieces of the puzzle outside of Qigong that you practice? That's a different. Yeah, feng shui, than... you know, um, we, that is one of the, um, we call five environment because humans are very important of living in, in a good environment. So feng shui means, feng means wind and shui means water. So that means a good, a good place that have water, have mountain, have, uh, have forest or have tree or have ocean. So that means a feng shui means a place that have all kind of elements, all five major elements, water, land, tree, a forest and all the mountain and the water flow. So feng shui means a very good environments and when you stay there you you are affecting by all these natural elements that nourish us so every area every places nourish different kind of people because of the feng shui because of the land water mountain and the, the land that have when they have a harmony we, we go to a place oh this place is so beautiful they have everything there have all the feng shui have all the all the elements of the nature is present so we call good feng shui that means this land have a harmony energy mm -hmm. and that is very good to nourish and grow extraordinary people <laughs> And that is in the Tao set, very important. Well, that, you know, I, I believe that 100% because does that not eliminate stereotypes? Because I've always said that, you know, everybody, everybody in the world has the same sensitivities, sensibilities, whatever you want to call it. But the thing that's different in their life is the environment which creates a different path. Yeah, so the, the environment sense. affect the person mm -hmm. that a lot that in the Tao we live. If we, yeah, if we have a good environment, it nourish that person to be have much more better energy, much more balancing energy. Now, have you ever, in the Taoism, do they ever talk about the, the pineal gland? Yes. The pineal gland we call light and darkness gland. And the pineal gland in the Tao is very important because it's the first step in the practice you have to, to find the location of the pineal and make connection to the pole star. So that is a whole practice, every single level that you have to do it. Because without the pole star alignment from the, so you from the nose, make a line 45 degree up and you're locating the, in the middle and you go up a little bit. That is where the location of the pineal gland. And you have to learn how to align the chin and make this pineal gland align to the pole star, the north star. And the big deeper involves so much about alignment of the pole star and the seven gland in the brain is involved with the big deeper. So every gland have to involve with the big deeper how to activate all the, all the brain and the center of the brain and the gland system of the brain.
What do you what do you think about the calcification of the pineal gland? You know, in, here in the U.S., they have a lot of they have fluoride in the water, which calcifies the pineal gland, which limits sensory. Because you know, if you want to have more sensory, you need to cleanse your pineal gland. Is that is that thought about? Do y'all protect your pineal gland over there in Thailand? Yeah, the whole key is that. Every time when we sit, we have to align the tip of the nose and, and here, top of the crown, 45 degree, and find the pineal gland first. And after that, you have to find the alignment of the, uh, the big dipper. Gotcha. The big dipper that we have to align it called loop Kong and energy like a big dipper. So I tell them to show the slide. So that mm-hmm. we have, this is the first thing you have to learn. That's the first step. If you don't learn how to align with the pineal gland, with the big dipper, there are no practice here. Yeah, gotcha. Because there are the important parts that affect uh, the importance of the, the glands that involve with the light and darkness gland. And when we go into the dark room, so we, every January, February, March, we do the dark room practice. And the whole practice is involved with the big dipper and the pole star. Because we are in this northern hemisphere, are so much involved with posta and the pineal gland, and that is the whole practice. So, so the is the nine level. Every level is practicing this posta, big dipper, and the nine planets. How all these things affect our organ, affect our brain, our glands. The brain is so much connecting with all these uh, posta and the pineal and all the pineal gland. You look at this picture, yeah. that is how you alignment with the, um, the whole pineal gland right in here, alignment with the pole star, and mm-hmm. now we have Vika coming in, and the big dipper aligned with all the gland system in the brain, and how this energy affect our energy flow into the body. So that is the whole, and the whole white light is very important part in affecting our gland system. And um, have you, have you ever noticed that the bone, you know, when I was, I was discovering this and realized that the pineal gland was God's data center, right? The bone, when I talk about creation of four and how it's tied to the body, the bone in the head, right? When you look at the, 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 the third the eye, try, yeah the symbol and then you look at the bone in the head and you put that bone that slanted bone you realize that bone is a one-fourth slant on a flat surface and that speaks to that speaks to creation of four from the beginning tied to the pineal gland with that being a one-fourth slant have you ever heard anything like that yes yeah we we have practice for that especially practice for the whole scout I can show you all the slide because I teaching every day like that really yes let me see the picture because the whole skull involves so much about how you connecting with the with the postar, Vika, Big Dipper, and all the nine planets. The nine planet involved with all our organs. Every organ, every planet is one organ. So that is a whole this this is a whole system practice about everything start is beginning from you, nature, planet and the star that uh, we can practice, mm-hmm. okay? So the star we can practice is, is the um, Big Dipper and Pole Star. So that we only uh, practicing the star we can, and the most important part is, is these two, the, um, the North Star, Vika, and the Big Dipper that involve with us, okay? And that is a whole practice. That is the beginning and the planets. All the five major planet, that mean nine planet, but the five major planet that connecting with our five major organ. They are the four in one with different type, different other part of the body. So that is the whole practice of how we get it. Like the white light, we have to we have to use the white light because the brain, all the communicating cell in the brain, it need white light. No white light, there are no communication light because all this all this white light is so much involved with communication. So when uh, this is the West discovered that, okay, this is the West discovered that the Uta white light, 
the universal ultraviolet light. So this ultraviolet bio signal is the communicating light. If this communicating light have problem, that the cell have no connection and not communicating with the other cell, that means that cell turn to a cancer cell. So anything mm. happen, so any fortification of this signal happen, that cell turn to cancer cell. And mm. the only way that light can uh, change the whole problem. So now you, we, so the, that is a Tao practice for a thousand years. Mm. You have to learn how to, to grow a horn in order to absorb violet light and fill the whole white light with hold the, the whole brain with white light. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, when there no more, no white light, the cell cannot talk to each other. And when the cell have no communication, even they living in a trillion cell, they turn themselves to the cancer cell. And that's right. why when it turned to cancer cell, it slowly, slowly turn every single cell into cancer cell. And gradually, the whole body no light. So that is the Anything wrong with this, that means cancer. And it put off all the light, put off all the light in the body. Mm -hmm. And that is mean the end and die. Yeah. So that's, and that's where the balance comes into play, utilizing every, every mm -hmm. piece of the puzzle on earth. The balance, we're talking about the balance, you know, qigong, that's, that's where this comes from. Having, you know, the sun, whatever you need for your body, balancing with the elements is kind of the, the full effect of everything, right? Yes. Going back to balance. If you don't have that, you're saying that you can develop cancer and die. Um, and that's why the Tao practice is that for a thousand years, Four to five thousand years, Tao already know the organs and they have the housing, checking all the organs, how they work and how to balancing it. In a Tao practice is, is a set of practice back to four, five thousand years ago. It's a set of practice of moving energy, taking all the environment energy, taking the planet and the, and the universal energy into us. Because our five major organs, five major organs like the heart, the spleen, the lungs, the kidney, the liver, five major organs have connection to the nature and have very specified each organ connecting to the planets. So when we align these five major organs with the natural forces and with the planet, like the heart, connecting with the Mars, like the spleen, the spleen yellow, connecting with the Earth, or we call the, the Saturn planet. So each organ have one planet to connect and to download energy, and, and all the planets store information, store knowledge, and store wisdom, because each one are stored specified knowledge and wisdom for one particular organ, because the linking of the, like the heart fire is the mark, like the earth, the spleen is earth, and that is Saturn. And the lung we call metal, and that is uh, Venus. So each one have one particular planet to connect and have different color, and each planet have one wisdom and knowledge to nourish that organ. So it's a whole practice of about wisdom from the star. Yeah. Now, do you work with stones or you utilize stones for anything? Yes, we have the whole many sounds. So the number one that everybody have to learn is each organ have one sound. Like the lung sound, we call lung sound. It is the hissing sound in the lung. So we, every, every organ have one position, one sound. So they are tonified, uh, uh, they are detoxing the sound. Like the lung sound, when you do the lung sound, when you do the, the lung stop, the right frequency. So the Tao meditate, they meditate Tao, and they hear, when they go deep, they hear the sound of the organ. And so our uh, uh, original sound, like the lung sound, is And when we, when the Tao master listen to it, that they have the right sound, they're healthy. When they have making wrong sound, they get sick. So there is a one whole practice we call sick healing sound. You, you make the right sound. If the lung are sick, now they tune that sound. They get, when you say, when you pronounce the right frequency of the, of the good organ sound, now the lung 
when they received this good sound, they started to get healing. I teach this so long, 50 years around the whole world. Every, every country, <laughs> every wow. country that uh, you can say that is a major country, I teaching that. So the sequencing side is a basic, basic training that everybody have to learn to heal themselves first. To make your organs, five major organs with five major sound, plus the last sound is the triple warmer, upper warmer. So that's called six healing sound practice. Yeah. What kind of things have you seen in your lifetime that was maybe out of the ordinary, like something good happened with what you do? You know what I'm saying? Like spiritually. I teach 50 years. <laughs> Uh, up to now, right, 50 years. I started in America, 20, I teaching in America and Europe 25 years. And I still teaching in Europe. So up to now is 50 years. And uh, every country in the world. And I wow. wrote, uh, wrote the Tao system 60 books. So that means I complete my work. <laughs> and uh, all, every system practice have recording in video. So we have a big, big data of uh, video that uh, people can go and look at it and to hear all the testimony of people around the world that do the practice. And that you can go into the mingtechchia.com and look for all the, the instructor, every country they have how many instructor, and uh, every language is now. When I, when I teaching now, is every time it's translated into eight different kind of languages in the world. Yeah. Wow. So you, you can go to mengtechchia.com and you look at that. And, and see, what, see what kind of things have happened. Um, yeah, happened, how many, all the testimony, all the recording, all the teaching is in there. So I'm making one, one big data for that. So everything is gathered in there. Do you feel like that Taoism is always evolving? Like are there, have, have you come, came up with new things? that you didn't know and kind of added to the story of what you do? Nearly every day. <laughs> every day. Because now I'm teaching another two, two months fully. We have people here. We have people here. Uh, now we have a... Uh, so I'm teaching online now, mostly. Mm. But now to, uh, here we have uh, about 30 people that stay here and study here together with the online. So my major teaching part is online now. Because after COVID, you know, you have yeah. more way to travel. So yeah. that's my, so now I develop more in the, uh, so, so in the, um, in the, the YouTube, now the people, they just send me that I have 7.5 7. million subscribers in the YouTube. That means the people that watch me. Yeah. Wow. So that is, um, yeah, uh, that's that's pretty wild. I mean, I guess what I'm saying too, like, have you have you came up with new ideas? Like, like if there was an idea in Taoism, right? That's in, in you know written so forth. Have you came up with anything that accentuates that information to some extent? You know, like improve. I the I, I always teaching and pick up when I teaching. All the new information all come in. So whoever study with me, they people stay with me thirty years, for yeah thirty years all away. And um, people they always say that Master here, you teach you you have more new information all the time, because when I teaching they it connect by itself. And a new thing when I teach, I don't know in some new thing coming in, some idea coming in, some information coming in. So when I teach, every time is different. That means the same principle, but pick up information according to the people that I'm here and they are they in the present. So sometimes some people they have they need to know certain things. I don't know, but I pick up the information. It just come right, and I talk to them. I, and that means I teach it. I, after the class, they said, Master Chia, you just, when I come, I have questions, but now I have no more questions. So that is the, uh, when I teach, it's always energy. So yeah. uh, when I'm in Australia teaching, that time I have one media. She nearly blind, you know. She yeah. nearly blind. So she... Uh, teaching there in seven, in one whole week. She always sit in the back and have a young man guiding her to walk because she cannot see, but she mm -hmm. can see things. And, and a lot of people see that. So she said, you know, you, when you teach, there are seven masters behind you. I said, 
yeah, I, I aware of it, but I don't know that it's seven, okay? And uh, so he said, uh, the, the last one, number seven, not coming until you buy, until you have a center. And that time I, I not even think about have a center. Uh -huh. Because I in the U.S. to buy a big, I I always dream to have a big space and uh, creating a town garden. And after he said, I don't know what happened. And suddenly all the students that I teach mostly from European and America, and uh, they so I bring that I I brought them to the Pattaya, Thailand. Every year, I like to come back in New York too cold and stay in New York too cold in the winter. Mm -hmm. So every December, I left in the middle of the so I left the U.S. because too cold now. So I come yeah. to Thailand and we have the retreat here. And finally, they said, we have to have a center here. So that finally, we buy this Tao Garden. So that nice. is, uh, yeah, and we build. In uh, two years, we build. So now we are here, we can stay 200 people. They have room and everything and a space and meeting room and uh, an exercise room and uh, retreat and massage and healing. We have the whole, everything here. Nice. So we have the clinic and uh, spa and the uh, health clinic and holistic clinic here. Now, so when you are teaching, what do you, do you, when you feel information coming through, because I feel like I experience the same thing sometimes, do you, what do you feel? When you feel connected, do, 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 when I teach, I always connecting with the energy. That by the first thing that is to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean I focus in the Dantian, and we always start with abdominal breathing. And when I calm, that means but when I when it, when it start, the water light just come. Okay, and now we know that uh, when the West discover and assimilate all the information, they they come up with this picture. And this is what the Tao always talk about. Why did light come from the East? I don't know why they say the why did light come from the East, but that is the why did light. And that is the West discover that the whole universe covered with dark why did light. We have light because the sun too close to us. But actually, at, uh, we are in a, so when the darkness, then no sun. That is the dark why did light. It's the natural color in the universe and that is the west they spend eight billion research fail and spend another eight billion euro and research it. and they discover that the whole universe is covered with this white light and that this white light is our major practice and i talk about this before very long time ago because every time when the practice they have to start with this white light and how the white light enter into us and reflecting to the rainbow color and that yes. is how our optic fiber optic nerve on the back here and when the what when the light coming in it reflect them into the rainbow color and our organ so this is a practice so our organs this organ have one color that is reflecting and absorbing light because our organ is light okay mm -hmm. but inside us is darkness no light but when you see the light coming into the to the forehead entering the eye and this light reflecting in the optic fiber the optic nerve here in the back it's like a mirror and they reflect light down to the organ like that gotcha. when i learned the Tao, i said very good i i have a, a very good practice in the how to be in touch with the force, in touch with the energy, and in touch with myself. And the Tao all talk about this, but have a practice, a practical practice, you know. Gotcha. And, uh, and the meditation, like you are praying, you sit and meditate, smiling to the organ, bringing good energy, and try to... So it's a practice, and all the practice is doing good, and think good, do good, and God will bless you. And that's what the, the whole Tao theory yeah. So nice. that's why the Tao Te Ching, the Tao yeah. Bible talking about doing good, think good, always think good and don't think bad for yourself and other people. Yes. First thing, you have to love yourself. You have to make yourself healthy and you have to make yourself, when you're good, 
happy and healthy, you're a good person. You yeah, know. absolutely. Well, I know you mentioned your website, and I don't know if there's anything you want to mention before we go, but out there, I don't know if you want to mention your website again, your classes, your books. Is there anything you want to uh, mention real quick before we bring this to a close? Yeah, the, the people can go into com and books, or into YouTube, just say Mentechia books. And, and, and you can search from any, any media. They have books, they have classes, they have people teaching around the whole world. So we have about four or 5,000 active instructors around the world teaching every yes. country. Yes. Awesome. Well, this has been Master Montak Chi, and check out his website if you want to learn his philosophies. And I appreciate you coming on the show and telling me all your vital information and how, how the body's tied to the universe. And I appreciate that. And uh, again, this has been Master Montak Chi. I'm John Edmonds Cosma, the CEO of Bang Productions. Thank you.